Brake bleeding isn't normally a one person job. Normally you need a person in the car, pump the brake pedal, you need another person to go around the car, crack off your bleed nipples and drain out your brake fluid. I need to change the brake fluid on my Peugeot and I'm not going to be doing it with an extra person. I'm going to be doing it with Easy Bleed. Now there are other brake bleeding systems that allow you to do it one person. They range massively in price. This is the cheapest one you can get hold of. So all I'm gonna do is screw that end onto my reservoir, fill the bottle up with the fluid, and this hose here goes onto, well in my case I'm using a spare tire, spare wheel, and uh, you can deflate the tire on your car, use that, and just reinflate it afterwards. It needs to be below 20 PSI, so I know this one is. So I'm gonna hook that on there. This whole system is now pressurized. I can now go around, crack off my bleed nipples and bleed my brakes. So, next thing I'm gonna do is go around, take all my wheels off. I'm gonna start with the furthest from the master cylinder, which is gonna be the near side rear. I'll come to the offside rear, near side front, offside front, we'll have clean brake fluid. All right, wheels are all off on the floor. I'm gonna start here, near side rear. I'm taking off the little grommet, there's little caps on the uh, bleed nipples. If I come under here, I can show you the bleed nipple, which is just there. I'll try and get that, there we are. Just there, it's a bit wet. I've just cracked them off, cracked them all off to make sure that they turn and don't snap. Um, yes, I have a bottle with a clear hose on it, um, which probably won't reach without coming out. Oh, it will, there you go. I'm just gonna pop that on there, like so. Um, these bottles you can pick up for pence if you want to do it this way or you could just put a piece of clear hose on it or if you want to be really brave just make a mess on the floor. And all I'm going to do is crack off that bleed nipple. There we go. I should start to see fluid come through that tube. Here we go. I see the bubbles coming through. I'm just going to leave that going until we've got cleaner fluid coming through. I've just repositioned the bottle to get myself like a little S-bend so I can actually see the colour of the fluid and uh, it's coming through pretty clear so I think that one's pretty much done so I'll close, close off the nipple, put my little rubber back on. Like so, there we go. And uh, I'll do the other side, which will be exactly the same as this. And then I'll move to the front and do the calipers. Right, to the front. Different style of brake on here. We've got the caliper with the pads rather than the drums and shoes, but same principle. Nipples there, I've already taken off the little rubber cover and cracked it off to make sure it works. <laughs> so again, we'll just shove the hose on there. There's a little bit more space as well, yeah. On there. Um, my front ones here are 11 mil. So again, different size spanner. There we go. So you can see the fluid coming through now. It's quite dark actually, this fluid. <coughs> In fact, you can also see, you can see little bits coming through there. I thought they were air bubbles, but they're actually bits. You can see them, I don't know if you can see that. So I might actually leave these ones on, leave the fronts on for a bit longer because let's see if I can just get a bit more of a turn out there, get more speed. Um, so I'm going to leave these on a bit longer, I think, just to try and clear clear this dark, murky stuff and all these bits out. Um, the bits are probably what was in the reservoir that's just being pumped through, so we should also end up with cleaner fluid in the reservoir. And... Uh, yeah, I'll do both fronts and come back to you. All right, while the final side is just finishing off, I thought I'd just go through a few, uh, I won't say health and safety things, but a few things to bear in mind if you're gonna try and do this job on your own. Number one, brake fluid's nasty stuff. It does strip paintwork. It's actually a really good paint stripper. Um, it does strip paintwork. Um, I, I, I'm allergic to it, um, so you may be too. Uh, my skin goes very red and very itchy if I get it on my skin, hence the gloves. And um, 
yeah, if you are going to work on your own braking system, please be very, very careful. And if you're not sure, get it checked out after you're done. Make sure the bleed nipples are tight when you've finished. Um, you don't want to get any brake fluid on any of the friction surface um, or any kind of oils because uh, it will affect your braking. It could even cause your brakes to not work. Um, other than that, yeah, it's, it's a good easy way of bleeding your brakes on your own if you don't have an extra pair of hands. And it's a lot cheaper than some of the big um, systems that kind of, I think, I mean, I've never used the, the more expensive systems. They do kind of work the same way as far as I'm aware. So um, yeah, that's something worth bearing in mind too. Another thing to bear in mind as well, actually, is um, dispose of this stuff properly. Don't just tip it down and drain it. Like I said, it's really nasty stuff. Um, you do not want to harm any animals with it. So when you're done, disconnect your air supply. Um, obviously, got to chop the wheels back on it. I'm going to go around with a bit of brake cleaner, just clean off um, the excess. That's you can see that still they stay a bit moist where you get a little bit of dribble. Um, this side might be a bit easier to show. Yeah, there you go. You can see it's a bit wet around there. <clears throat> I like to go around with a bit of brake cleaner, clean it off, so that if at a later stage, I've got a brake fluid leak, oh no, it's not there. Or is there if it is leaking from there? Um, just something that I like to do. So, yeah. Uh, like I said, make sure you put the cap back on, 